Hello everyone! Uh, this next game comes as a suggestion from a subscriber and since we started the day with a 10 year old defeating a grandmaster I thought this would be a fantastic follow up. Uh, this game was played in 2017, it was played in May, it's played between uh, Aditya Mittal and Niaz Marshid. Uh, the game was played in the 10th KIIT International Tournament in India. Uh, Aditya here is a 11 year old candidate master from India and Niaz uh, Marshid is uh, a grandmaster from Bangladesh. So definitely quite a matchup, and if you, <laughs> you can see young uh, Aditya Mittal here, he really looks like a happy camper. Uh, but as you'll see in this game, he's uh, quite the ferocious beast. Uh, so let's see this game. And for those of you who enjoy a nice game of the Queen's Gambit Declined, uh, this will be quite a treat. Uh, Aditya has the white pieces and he plays d4. Uh, we have d5, c4 and e6, declining the gambit. Knight to c3, uh, bishop to b4, knight to f3, and knight to f6. Daragos in defense. c captures on d5, e captures on d5, and bishop to g5 now. Developing a piece, pinning the knight, uh, all is well. Uh, knight b to d7, we have e3, and c5 now. Uh, bishop to e2, queen to a5, threatening to capture the, the knight and then capture the pawn with the queen, but uh, Aditya simply castles here. Uh, we have bishop captures, b captures, and uh, here, what's the idea here? Can you capture the pawn on c3? Uh, well, you can, but if you play queen captures uh, pawn on c3, uh, then rook to c1, and white will get a lot of development uh, for the c3 pawn, and he can always recapture on c5. For example, rook to c1, uh, queen to a5, and the d captures on c5. Uh, it's not really not really a good idea to capture. If you capture, then bishop captures on g5 may be coming, and after g captures on f5, queen captures on d5, and uh, black is black has totally fallen apart. So after this, b captures uh, on c3. Uh, a principled move, well, maybe not a principled move, but uh, definitely an interesting move would be c4. Uh, lock in uh, white's light square bishop and it will it will take white some time to, to untangle from this position uh, but after and then of course knight to e4 is coming you can al always then attack the c3 pawn uh, but after this b captures on c3 knight uh, to e4 immediately now attacking the dark square bishop on g5 also now with a double attack on c3 uh, we have c4 now and knight to c3 attacking the queen uh, and the light square bishop uh, we have queen to c2 and knight captures bishop. Queen captures bishop and now comes d captures on c4. Queen captures on c4, c captures on d4 and again queen captures on d4. And after this uh, series of exchanges, uh, the material is equal. It's a uh, it's slightly better position for white, uh, but uh, I mean white does have a, a pawn majority on the on the king side, four to three. And uh, Grandmaster Marshat here has a 2 to 1 advantage uh, in the pawns on the queen side. So this is probably what he was uh, counting on and uh, he thought he would soon create a pass pawn here and uh, push for the win. Uh, but uh, in this position he castled and we have rook a to c1. Uh, knight to b6 and here white definitely has a couple of options. Uh, white can go rook to c5. Uh, maybe bishop to e7, uh, even sacrifice the a2 pawn here, uh, white will get a lot of activity for this pawn. Uh, but here in this position, as you can see, uh, young Mittal, you can't spell Mittal without Tal, uh, in this position he played bishop to f6. And this is this is quite the move. Uh, it seems like a weird move, but it's actually, it's actually a brilliant move. Uh, black is actually forced to lose a pawn here. Uh, best, best idea best idea for black here to defend would be something like queen to a4 uh, allowing bishop captures on g7 queen captures bishop captures and he would have to play this play this end game being a pawn down uh, but after this bishop to f6 move uh, gra the grandmaster decided to accept the challenge and played g captures on f6 and uh, now <clears throat> now white ga gains so much activity uh, he plays rook to c5 uh, bringing the rook into the game with tempo and then will transfer it to the to the king side to join the attack and uh, Here pro the the best idea probably would be to capture on a2 queen captures a2 and after queen captures on f6 uh, Now play knight to d5 this comes with a tempo on the queen and also you're not allowing the rook to play rook to g5 checkmate 
So after this, uh, you do stop White's threats, but White can simply play Queen G5, check King H8, and grab the piece back. So you know uh, the material is still equal here, but uh, you know you have an open King on H8. It, it it will be hard for Black to defend this. So after this, Rook to C5, the Grandmaster doesn't go for this. Uh, he plays Queen to A3, with the idea that if Queen moves, uh, the Rook will be attacked. Uh, so we have rook to h5, and rook to h5 is actually the only move that uh, still gives white the advantage after the sacrifice. Uh, rook to e8 now, making room for the king on f8. Uh, queen captures on f6, and rook to e6 now. Uh, we have rook to g5 check, uh, king to f8, and queen to g7 check. King to e8, uh, and in this position, uh, young Mittal here played knight to d4, uh, bringing the knight into the attack with a tempo on the rook. Uh, but there was actually a better move. Uh, queen to h8 check, followed by king to e7, uh, followed by rook to g8. And this completely immobilizes uh, black's queen side. Black can't develop any pieces here. Uh, and probably to even continue playing this game, black would have to play bishop d7, uh, develop, develop some pieces, uh, and allow this rook captures uh, on a8, knight captures, and queen captures. Uh, but uh, then again, you know, uh, it's uh, it's a it's a hard uh, hard call to make when you're the one uh, leading the attack. So after king to e8, he played knight to d4, probably preparing this maneuver after the knight already went to to, to d4. Uh, but now black has this uh, rook to g6 idea. Uh, rook to e5 check, bishop to e6 blocking. Now the check is blocked, and also this comes with uh, developing a piece. Now the rook can also enter the game. Uh, queen to h7. And uh, here, queen to d6. And this queen to d6 is actually, uh, a, you know, it's not a blunder, but it's a pretty big inaccuracy. Uh, with something like rook to c8, black can, black can still play this game. For example, knight captures, rook captures, rook captures, pawn captures. And, uh, you know, white does have this uh, monster, monster pawn chain that he will start pushing forward. But uh, it's, it's hard to tell if it's uh, compensation for the piece. And white will always be able to draw the game since the king is wide open on e8. Uh, but after queen captures on h7, uh, uh, Grandmaster Murshed, uh, Marshed played queen to d6, uh, and we have f4. And already now it's it's very hard to defend for black. Uh, now rook c8 isn't quite as appealing. For example, rook to c8, uh, white now has the option of playing queen captures on g6. And uh, if you if you capture the queen, then rook captures bishop, and this is this is all over for black. Uh, so something like queen captures on e5 would be played, and after f captures uh, f captures on g6 and knight captures, uh, white would be up two pawns. Okay, they are two doubled pawns, but still probably a winning game for white if, if played correctly. Uh, so after f4, uh, rook to f6 was played now, and this is actually blunder that loses the game. Uh, it seems like uh, everything is fine, but actually it's not. Queen to h8 was played uh, by young Aditya Mittal, and in this position Grandmaster Niaz Marshad resigned the game. Uh, what's the idea here? Well, uh, obviously if you, if you play something like king to d7, you lose the rook uh, on f6, so you do have to protect the rook. Uh, after king to e7, uh, what would happen is actually queen to h4, and there is nothing black can play here. Uh, the rook is pinned. Uh, knight to f5 with check is coming, forking the king and the queen. So you have two options here. Either you move the king so you don't get forked, but then you lose the rook on f6. Uh, or you move the queen, something like queen to b4. Uh, but then again, knight to f5 check is coming. Again, uh, both rook and bishop can't move. Uh, you have to move the king, king d7. Now you, first you bring another rook into the attack. Uh, rook d1 check, king moves, and I simply capture with queen captures on f6. And... Uh, it's uh, it's it's game over. Uh, White is now actually up the exchange and uh, and he's up two pawns, so there is no point in continuing this game. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so today we had uh, a ten-year-old and an eleven-year-old uh, crushing grandmasters. So quite a, quite a you know a great day <laughs> for young chess players. Uh, I would like to thank Alan Asbury for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And if you've seen in my previous video, I've invited you to uh, help me promote chess. Uh, so if you, have, if you have a nice photo or a nice video of you teaching someone how to play chess, 
uh, do send it. There will be uh, an email where you can send send it to in the description below. Uh, feel free to do so. And like I said in my previous video, I will uh, mix all those videos and photos together to create a very nice, uh, you know, video of uh, everyone in this community uh, joining up to, to promote chess. So yeah. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon.